Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I thought I'd look at some different Uchimatas from the Japanese team. Here we're looking at Nagase, and I think Nagase, he probably has a traditional Uchimata. He's not the kind of jump in and explode kind of person like Yoshida is. Yoshida, another kind of traditional Uchimata, but a little bit different. I do think there's kind of two types of traditional Uchimatas. The kind of put your foot in there and rotate, or the jump in and explode type. But anyway, let's get into it. Some really interesting types of Uchimatas. Definitely not traditional. And first up, we've got Shishime. Shishime Toru. His Uchimata, I want to describe it as like a seesaw. So he's putting himself in an advantageous position and then just kind of rocking on his supporting leg from one angle to the next, tilting his opponent over. There's not too many videos of him doing this, but I definitely think in that first Ippon I showed you, it's, it's pretty clear. Here's another one here. You can see he just kind of puts his foot in there and then kind of just lets all his positioning do the work for him as his opponent rolls over his leg. Maybe it's a little bit traditional. I'm not sure. I definitely see a difference here in how Uchimata is kind of taught and how he's doing it. But it's going to get more ridiculous. Trust me. Right next up we've got Maruyama. And Maruyama, I would say the throw itself is definitely traditional it's very precise and accurate but what he does with his feet leading up to the throw is is something something different so you see here before the entry he's just really heavy on the feints and the fakes and he does a lot of pulling with his feet as well i'll show you what i mean so in this clip just just watch Moriyama's right leg he's a left-sided fighter so his right leg is going to be his his posting leg his supporting leg watch his right leg here Walking to the side, pulling, pulling to the side, faking it with the Ashiwaza. So you're not sure if he's going to walk to the side and kind of pull you onto him, or use that leg to push off and jump in and explode with his Uchimata. Here it is again. Watch these little steps he's taking backwards, pulling with that right foot and then jumping in there. Ono Shohei, he does it a little bit as well, so it makes me think it might be a might be a Tendi University kind of tactic or entry into Uchimata. And this is just insane here, against Tanaka, recent competition at the 2022 Senbatsu that they had in Japan recently. And just look at the fakes. So many fakes, and Tanaka, he was just bamboozled, didn't know when Mariyama was going to go in. So Mariyama's Uchimata, somewhat traditional on the entry, very sharp, very precise. But what he does with the feet leading up to it and how he jumps in there and explodes, really interesting. Right, next up, and Inoue Kose, well... I've got him here for two, two different kinds of Uchimatas that he does. First is a Kenken Uchimata or a Hopping Uchimata. You see this somewhat in the lightweights, but you don't really see it in the heavyweights. Nomura did this as well, but just the way he combines it with his Ochigari and then hops into it. Really nice, unique Uchimata. But the other kind of Uchimata that he does, the one that got all the screams from the crowd, is the One Step. And he was such a legend at the one-step Uchimata, just jumping in there, left leg first, and then flying in there like that. So incredibly difficult to do. And Suzuki Keiji once said that Inoue Kose has this weird body type where his bottom half is really, really short, and then his upper body is, is quite tall. So this kind of Uchimata was perfect for him. He's strong in the legs and able to get under there unlike anyone else. I do not recommend this Uchimata if you have tall, lanky legs. Next up, another fellow from Tokai University, but one of the weirdest and most interesting Uchimatas that I've ever seen. Here you're seeing more of a Hanegoshi kind of version of it, but he definitely doesn't do it like this in competition. That's Haga Ryunosuke, and it's so odd. So usually in Uchimata, you're kind of going like a pendulum. Think of like... A swing, how a swing, you know, goes back and forth, or a golf swing, how you retract your arm as you swing the club over your shoulder. But the way Hugger does it is, it's almost like his foot just goes completely vertical. So in more traditional Uchimatas, it's a gradual force with the leg going through your opponent's leg. But Hugger's is kind of like a one impact. He's he's jumping in there, going vertical, and once that leg hits, you're going over. Okay, another type of Uchimata, Wolf Aaron. 
And he is another person who doesn't do his Uchimata like he does in Nagekomi. But if you can't do the basics, there's no way you're going to be able to do these incredible variations. So, Wolf, he's a shorter guy. He's stockier, he's got shorter legs, shorter arms, but he's strong. So what he likes to do is post his lapel hand very far behind your head. So what that does is it allows him to get really close to you and then he's using his entire body weight, all that pressure from his legs, from his strong hands, to force your head down towards the ground. So for him, it's more about getting your head close to the ground and using his leg to lever you over than it is him throwing his leg up between your legs like Maruyama or Haga. And lastly, I'll just point it out, but he's got a great Tani Otoshi and he mixes it in and well. It's really difficult to see whether he's going for the Uchimata or the Tani Otoshi. And last of all, how could I not include him? Ono Shohei. Ono Shohei definitely has an interesting uh, Uchimata here. You can see him rotating heavily to the right side and quite often he will not have a lapel grip. He will just have double sleeves and two things are going on here. One, he's incredibly strong, and two, he's incredibly flexible. He's able to get his trunk almost down to the mat. Sometimes his head touches the mat and raise that leg up through at the same time while creating all that force. It's incredible. His Uchimata is definitely incredible, and it's something that I don't think people should try and replicate because I think only he can do this sort of Uchimata. Although, Sasaki... He had a pretty good attempt at it. Anyway guys, that's it from me. What do you think of these Uchimatas? Is there anyone I left out? Let me know in the comments and I'll talk to you soon.